Hi, so today I'm going to show you what I do with my thinker mould. So these are the two that I've just made. So the flat on the back, stand up lovely. So let's put those to the side for a moment. These are the moulds themselves. So I'm just going to give them a quick wipe because I haven't wiped them from the last time. Just baby wipes, um, nothing extravagant, don't need to clean them with anything else other than a baby wipe. I'm a bit heavy handed, it's a bit quick and a bit heavy handed. So I'm just going to set those there to um, dry in the air. These are the chameleon powders that I'm using at the moment. I think these ones actually were from Temu um, and they've been absolutely fantastic. I'll just show you. So galaxy, blue, teal, grey. Golden, bronze, plum, and champagne. So I'm just going to mix my resin. I'm using a two part dipoxy. Um, this is from Germany that can be um, bought from Amazon and it really is the best resin um, I've ever used for things like bubbles, curing, mixing times, all of the above really. So what I'm going to do because it's a two to one so it is classed technically as a deep pour, um, I can actually pour a bit more um, into this cup. So this is my part B and I like to do the hardener first um, because the part A is thicker so it sits at the bottom um, longer. So I usually do 300 of part A and 150 of part B. That's my 150 of my part B. And then I just set my scale again. And then I want 300 of the part A. wipe around the tops of these when I've poured out because then you find you've put it on the floor and it's stuck to the carpet because I am just a little bit messy when I make things so these are the things I've learned over the years so as you can see you've got a thicker liquid now on the top because the part A is on the top and you'll see it looks very cloudy so what I'm doing is I'm teasing it from the bottom up to the top and it'll go even cloudier, if that's a word. Just bringing it all up and then I mix in two different directions. So that direction first and then that direction. And then I tease up again. Make sure I'm getting all the way to the edges as well. And then give it a good stir. Now, as you can see, how quickly this dipoxy has actually stirred in. Yes, you'll see some small micro bubbles, but they will actually go as soon as um, you, you spray some isopropyl um, alcohol on it. So I always like to wipe 
everything down while I've been doing it. And then I have a pot that I sit with some fairy liquid and, and you know, soapy water on the side and everything just goes straight into that. So I'm going to sit that to one side for now and then I'll show you what I do in the moulds. What I have found though using um, the mica powders, uh, especially the chameleon ones because they're so fine, um, it does get absolutely everywhere because you're blowing a lot of this out of um, the mould as well. So I'm just having a little look at which ones I want to go for today. Um, let me think. So I've done green in that one. I've done bronze and I've done gold. So I'm going to go for plum, grape and teal. And then blue, galaxy and gold, I think, in that one. So I've just got a little makeup brush and I just tap off any excess and I just start teasing it in. Now sometimes you do have to pick it up and move it about a bit. So I'm just going to do the head with that colour, that's all. I'm going to do it symmetrical but with two different colours so you can see I'm not being careful I'm doing it quite quickly and um, it's easy to do it that way you don't need to be really pragmatic with it okay In some places it'll look like you, you've put absolutely loads and it'll look like you've put none in other places. Um, but trust me, it does stick um, and it does show once you've you've demolded it as well. So as you can see, there's some clumps in here. So to get rid of those, all I'm literally going to do is is blow it. And I blow it away from um, where I'm working. So that one's all done. You will get little bits on here, but that's why I use these mats, because they stick, nothing um, runs off it. I've just given that one a blow because I did put a bit too much in, to be fair. It's trial and error. Like I've said, I am uh, a bit of um, a messy crafter, unfortunately. But I'm sure I'm probably not the only one. Sorry, you can hear me blowing it as well, can't you? But... It's nice for you to actually see and hear what I'm doing.
Because that one's done as well now. It looks like when you've actually done it, it, it doesn't look like you're adding um, much mica to it once you've blown it off. And you do then think to yourself, well, you know, what's that going to look like once you've, you've added your backing colour? And when you've demoulded it, you don't think you're going to get much from it. But trust me, you absolutely do. Um, the mica powder goes a very long way and especially um, the chameleon powders. So all I'm doing is just getting that excess off, trying to have a bit of a tidier workspace. But as you can see, yeah, I don't have a tidy workspace at all. It's a mess all the time. So we've got these two now. Like I've said, I've poured them exactly the same as I did for these two. And you can see I've, I've hit every area um, in those moulds and how much the, the, that those colours show up. Okay, so we're going to add some mica powder to the pot now. So on the last one, um, I used aubergine and black, but actually it's not back black, it's more of a, a grey black. Um, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to try um, a royal blue with a bit of that grey in as well. Now, I don't tend to measure my mica powders because I know by now how much I need to use. Just trial and error from over the years, really. So that's enough. And I like to do them one at a time, so not together, just in case you've added too much of one, not enough of the other, etc. So I'm just wiping off my stick from earlier again. <clears throat> so you see how much I've added. And what I do is I mix it on the top first. Because if you let it all sink while it's powder and clumpy, it doesn't dissolve very well. And then I go around and I tease it to the edge of the cup again to break up those clumps. I suppose it's only like when you're baking and you, you're putting flour in and then you add, you know, milk, eggs, whatever, you can get lumps in it. So now I'm stirring. You can see how rigorous I am with my stirring. Um, I'm not bothered in the slightest about bubbles because I know I'm not going to get any um, with this dipoxy. So you can see there's not really, there's a few bubbles coming up, but that's on the surface. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this black actual grey it looks black but as i say when you add it it is actually grey so you can see it's more of a charcoal grey and then i'm going to do the same again let it just mix along the top and just start to tease it to squash it around the edges and there we go in fact i'll show you better there and then i always go around the edge of it and bring anything else in that's settled on the edge of the cup because again you'll get clumps when you start pouring it in so what this has done is it's just giving it a two-tone look so I don't know if you can tell in the light that you can see blue, but you can see grey through it as well. Again, I'm wiping this off straight away 
always seeing people saying how do you clean up your, your things afterwards the key is wipe it as soon as you've done it and stick it in a pot of soapy water some people like to just put them on the side and let them dry naturally and then pick them off um, I just prefer sticking it in water and it's not sticking all your sides up okay so these don't need to leave them to dry for, for any length of time really because it's silicon um, it will just adhere to the mould naturally. So I'm just being careful to not over pour. Don't want to go over the sides and get again a sticky mess. but you want to make sure you fill it all the way up to the top. You're starting to see that actually bubbles are coming up now to the surface as I've poured it. This is exactly what we want to happen um, because now we're going to attack them with the isopropyl. I can never say that word. Apologies. Um, I buy it in a really big container, 99.9%, but obviously that spray is going to just drench whatever you're doing. So I use the travel bottles you can take on holiday with you. A little spritzer, straight over the top. Bubbles, gone. Not a single one there. I might then come back to that in 10 minutes as it started to, to thicken and set and just give it another spray because you will get some bubbles um, that, that do become trapped and come back up again. As I've got a little bit of resin left, um, another good tip. Don't want that that way because I've got another mat under it, just realised. I want it to be straight. Is I always have things like animal moulds handy. Um, and I just use those um, with any extra resin. Then you've got no waste. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't fill the mould. So you'll see in a minute, this one won't be enough. Which is absolutely fine. Because then I'll just put another colour along the bottom. So that's what I did with these two um, when I made the other ones the other day. I've just put clear on the bottom. It looks quite nice. And again, you can see all the bubbles have come straight up. One spray is literally all it needs with, with this diapoxy. Okay, we'll come back uh, in a bit then and see them cured.